Hello, my fellow readers, it's I, Dark Symphony 777, with another fan fiction reading. As always, a link to the story will be in the description below. Please like the video, Yo, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, and leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts or any future ideas you want me to review. So, let's get started. I'm with you. Wait, you're not my wife, though. <laughs> let's get started. So, the story I'm doing a reading of is Trust Me. It's written by Kyoku. Kiyokis? I, I, I more than likely butchered that. And it's a night fanfiction. I never even heard of that. It's a comic, apparently. It was basically just another roulette choice. Um, so, I don't even know what's Here, here's, here's the, um, here's the synopsis. Christmas has always been just another ordinary day for Santa, and he's determined to spend it uh, so this year, but Kai seems to have other ideas. One shot, eventual Kai Sen. Don't like, don't read. I like, I, I, I kind of always get worried about this. Don't like, don't read. Uh, because whenever I hear that, I always think that the author's probably not even can, um, proud of this work because it's like because you have to you have to listen to people's opinions. If they don't like the story and they mention it to you, they just say don't like, don't read. That just means that you're not going to you're not going to respect their opinion. It's just it's just my thought. I don't like I don't like when people do this. It, it it just means they don't really have the confidence to have the story stand up and it's like, "Oh, I don't want to hear your negative criticism. It's just another way of saying, I don't want to hear criticism. Or, you know, you don't want to hear someone who doesn't like it express why they don't like it. People don't like It's impossible for everyone to like every single story. And if I don't like it, I'll say I don't like it. Um, when I read iTran, it's a My Little Pony Mist crossover by CTV Open. Um, let me see if I can... I Let's see if I let's see if like the page loads up. I I I wasn't even expecting. Yeah, here it is. See, there's Itran, there's Sunha. Uh, come on, load. Yeah, this is gonna. End. Okay. Here it is. Um. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get a page of this. Let's see. It's over on FIM Fiction. And the thing with this story is, I, I I couldn't finish reading it. It's like I didn't like it, and he and the author actually respected me for not liking the story. So for some reason, I just couldn't finish the story, and he respected the fact that I couldn't finish the story. <coughs> uh, I didn't say I hated it because you know I can't say whether or not I hate a story or not if I couldn't finish it. And so, uh, so it's like, I couldn't, so it's like, why, why would I back a story that I couldn't really finish? But that's, I, I know it's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of a weird thing to complain about because of simple facts. Well, if you don't, he's, he's not saying don't like, don't read because he's confident in the story. He's confident that, you know, there are people that are not going to like it, and they're going to respect, they're going to express their opinion on it, and then they're going to say, and he's going to reply, well, that's your opinion. Back to the story. Uh, let's see. For the last time, I'm not going to your stupid Christmas party, Sen said, irritated as he twirled some kite string around his fingers, head bent low. Aw, oh, come on, Sen, Kai, oh, it's a yaoi. Okay, that ma that makes this that makes this one more sense too, twice as idiotic. Because if it's a yaoi and you don't and you put this one, okay, you slightly make more sense because not everyone likes yaoi. Um, but it's also at the same time, it's like you're basically encouraging people. You're basically telling, hey, you don't like Yowie, don't read it. You don't, you don't like it, it is fine. Go, do whatever you want. Um, but on the other hand, it, you're basically just opening the floodgates to get trashed. Uh, and I'm basically 
all this stupid stuff. Like, I don't care about Yaoi and Yuri. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Kigo fan. I'm a Kigo fan. Kim Possible and Shigo, uh, lesbian relationship. But that doesn't mean I want it, you know, actually happen. It's just, that's just me. If it's a Yaoi, I'll read a Yaoi. Um... I draw the line at Empress because it's like, okay, I just can't wrap my head around it. If I get enough people to to do to tell me to read an Empress, I'll read it. But I won't I won't like it, but I'll read it. And I'll review it. But on um, but uh, anyway, back to this. Uh, there's, on one hand, you have people saying, okay, it's a Yaoi, so not everyone will like Yaoi. But on the other hand, you're basically giving a hint saying, uh, I don't have, you're doubling down on the fact that I don't have complete confidence in this story. I never liked it when people say, don't like, don't read, because they always never have conf, they always sound, it always comes off as not having full faith in their story, and the fact that... Uh, and the fact that you most of the time these people who do stuff like this, they they don't usually take criticism. I mean, or at least don't take criticism well. I mean, I don't like that. I think this would. I think th this phrase in 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 fan fiction should just go away forever. Um, because of the simple fact, I just don't. It just always seems to end up bad for anyone who reads it or anyone who, you know, who does a negative uh, review. Because I I waded through like a couple fan fiction where they said that the author can't t the, usually nine times out of ten the author couldn't take criticism worth a damn. And it always saying, "Oh my god, the story!" Not everyone will like the story. That's all I'm saying. So, all right, so it's a yaoi. So that was fine. Uh, Kai leaned forward and ducked his head up just a little in order to meet Sam's eyes. He grinned at the annoyed expression on the boy's face. Just this year. It'll be fun. I promise. The both of them sat on the cement ledge on the rooftop. They both... The, they both... One grandma at a... One ah 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 ah. Uh, both of them sat... Uh, the, oh, wait. Wait, wait. The both... Oh, never mind. It's like, I read that way too fast, and it's like... And now, reading it slowly kind of negates it. So, give rid of that grammar error. Because <laughs> the both of them, now, now reading it slowly kind of makes more sense. Okay. The both of them sat on the cement ledge on the rooftop, overlooking the city below. Smoke drifted up from the numerous chimney tops and factories scattered across the city. There was a ch constant chill in the air, and the sky was a steely gray. The dirt and smog mixed with the snow that had fallen over the past few days and created a ghastly shade of gray. When Sen had been coming up here, intending to fix his broken kite string despite the cold weather, yet he had expected to have at least some peace and quiet. However, he had not been expecting the company of a rather annoying, arrogant son of a politician that he dearly wished he wouldn't meet that day. I said it all way ready, Sen pushed Kai's head away from him and stood up. It's a no, and if you keep this up, it'll stay that way forever. And anyway, I don't celebrate Christmas. Are you Jewish? Are, do you celebrate, uh, Kwanzaa? Solstice Sun? You celebrate any of those? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of the characters' stuff. So I was like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm asking questions, people. Kai pouted. You're no fun, Sen. And what kind of a sick person will ce wouldn't celebrate Christmas? It's not part of my religion, stupid. Nor okay, so he, so, so he's probably Jewish, or, or he celebrates Kwan. Probably he's probably Jewish. So he celebrates um Qu uh, Kwanzaa. No, not Kwanzaa. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing a brain fart on the actual name <laughs> of the Jewish version of Christmas. Kwanaka, there we go. Kwanaka. I probably butchered that name because I'm laughing. <coughs> uh, Kai Blinkling laughed. Well, I guess you did make a point there. But even if we don't believe in all that, can't we at least get together and, like, celebrate the end of the year? Makes sense. Sen scowled at him. What's the use of celebrating this year? It wasn't anything extravagant. In fact, it was actually quite disastrous. Kai frowned and got up. Why do you say that, he asked. Hands in the pocket of his jacket. Sen stared coldly back at him. I met you, for instance. Ooh, burn. 
Kai's eyes widened, and then he, uh, Kai's eyes widened, then he chuckled. Oh, that actually hurt my feelings, Sen. He clutched his chest in mock hurt, and his face twisted into a pained expression. My poor heart, it's breaking. Sen scoffed softly and stroked his head. He pushed past Kai and took his wall like Kate, Kite, which had been leaning against the edge. Slowly and carefully, he reattached the string, making sure not to create any more knots or breaking it. Did you mean it? He heard Kai ask suddenly, his tone now much more serious than it had been just a while ago. Mean what? Sen replied, not turning to look at Kai as he was busy expecting the now reattached string on this kite. It's a story about, is this, is this whole comment about kites? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, he put it experimentally, uh, making sure that it was strong enough. When you said that it was a disaster that you met me, Kai replied. Since I'd widened in surprise, but he shook his head. Why do you ask, he asked, turning sideways so he was facing the high steel railing that ran along the edge of the rooftop. He ran his hand along the string before casting the kite into the air. It stayed up in the sky for a moment before slowly fluttering downwards, coming to land at Sen's feet. Sen reached down and picked it up. Kai shrugged his shoulders. I just want to know. It concerns me anyway. <clears throat> Sen didn't know why, but something about Kai's last sentence struck a nerve. He turned and glared coldly at him. That's all you ever think about, isn't it? Kai blinked. What is? Yourself, Sen spat at him without another word, walked briskly towards the door. Sen, wait! He felt a hand fall on his shoulder just as he was turning the knob and pushing the door open. He didn't know why, but Sen stopped. His mind told him not to, told him to go and run, but he didn't. He turned and looked coldly at Kai, waiting for him to say something. You still haven't answered me, Kai said. Sen shrugged his hand off his shoulder and sighed expre expre exasperately. Okay, no, I, I didn't mean it. He turned and was about to run through the door when Kai grabbed him by the hand. Quite suddenly, Sen could feel the heat rushing to his ear and his cheeks going red. Aww. No, I meant, are you coming to the party or not? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Bad timing. Kai asked, didn't, Sen didn't know what to say. Words of harsh rejection were forming on, the tongue, on his tongue, but he just didn't, couldn't find the strength to let them out. He didn't even know it was needed so much strength to say something as simple as he know. He gritted his teeth and shook his head. I... I don't know. He managed to let out. Kai sighed. Come on, Sen. I need a straight answer. Answer. Yes or no? Sen scoffed exasperately. Just leave me alone, will ya? He pulled his hand away and ran down the stairs, going as fast as he could and never looking back. All the while feeling his face go as red and hearing Kai's voice ring in his ears. Yes or no? <laughs> Wait, did he actually, was that an echo of his voice, or was he, did, did he actually, like, echo from the top of the, uh, voice, oh, no, it, it's, it, it, no, 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 it, it, it's, reading that again, it, it, it is echoing in his head, okay. Sen told himself countless times not to go back up to the rooftop. What if the super psycho of a politician's son was still up there, waiting to interrogate him again? The thought itself was enough to convince Sen to stay in the apartment. But by the time evening rolled in and his irritating stepmother was criticizing him again, he couldn't stand it. He took his kites and climbed up to the roof, hoping that Kai wasn't there. He pushed against the old door gently. It creaked, it creaked open at his touch. Poking his head through the crack, Sen scanned the area. Nothing seemed to be wrong. There was nothing, or should we say no one, in sight, and all he could hear was the usual truck from below. Sighing heavily, Sen, uh, Sen walked in and stood up on the edge. He had strung some lights on the kite string earlier and had some spare ready in case they didn't work. One by one, he cast each kite in the air, a trail of lights flowing, following around him. Before long, the sky was filled with tiny pinpricks of water light. That actually, that actually sounds really cool to look at. I, I mean, if I actually saw that in real life, I would actually be amazed at, uh, like, uh, like blinking on long, uh, kites like flying in the sky. That, would actually, be, that actually sounds pretty cool. Each hanging from the strings of ten swallow shaped kites. I'm pretty, and also I'm pretty sure the the comic is about uh, kites. Okay, nodding his head, sat down, Sin sat down on the ledge, <sighs> staring out at the spectacle. He couldn't help but think of the time when he had first met Kai. It was on a night much like this. He remembered he had been singing a song, hadn't he? An old twisted lullaby about a swallow. He, still, he could still remember when Kai had paid him in thanks for cheering up his sister and complimenting him on his work. Sen chuckled without knowing why, and he shook his head. Well, that idiot, he muttered. I knew I'd find you here. Sen whirled around and stared wide-eyed wide at the figure of Kai standing in the open doorway of the rooftop. Hands in his pockets. Kai grinned. 
What's wrong, Sin? You look like you've seen a ghost. Sin scowled back at him frostily and turned back to the lights. So what are you doing here, he said. Kai sat down beside him. You almost, you missed the party. Sen shrugged. So? Kai looked at him with an almost angry expression on his face. So you could have at least told me you weren't coming before I got my hopes up. Uh, Sai regarded him with, not, with a nonchalant look of amusement. I already thought I already told you. It's a no. Kai frowned and shook his head. No, you didn't. Sen scoffed. Uh, yes, I did. When? This afternoon. When this afternoon? <laughs> Banter. I like it. Kai crossed his arm over his chest, a smug look on his face. Sen sighed exasperately. I'm not doing this anymore. You're just being childish. Who are you to judge me? Kyle rallied. Uh, a smug smirk on his face. Easy for you to say. Sen swept away. You're the son of a politician. You can get away with anything. Kai chuckled. Yeah, anything, but not everything. Doesn't that mean the same thing to you, Amy? Eh. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I, I, I agree with... With, uh, with Kai. I, you can get away with anything, but you, but you can't really get away with everything. It's kind of a weird paradox sort of situation. What are you doing here, anyway? Dole, talking to you. Sen gave him a, are you serious, look. Ken laughed. Okay, I wanted to invite you one last time to the party. I lied, sorry. It hasn't ended yet. But come on, Sen. Even Ling dumped her homework to come. Sen scoffed. Nice try. I know for a fact that you don't have any homework today. Kai raised his hands to feet. All right. You got me, but believe me when I say that everyone is waiting for you there, he smiled. And I'm sure Min Min would be more than happy to finally meet you. Sen looked away at Kai's smile, finally, suddenly feeling embarrassing, embarrassed without knowing why. I don't know, okay? So please just lay me alone. Da, da, da. <laughs> Kai closed his eyes and shook his head, imitating a fussy mother. Doctor says that you shouldn't spend too much time alone or else he'll be seeing you in the psycho ward soon. Sen glared at him. And exactly which doctor said that? Kai grinned and winked at him teasingly. Dr. Kai, PhD, at your service. And then Sen couldn't help it. A laugh escaped his lips before he had time to stop it. And by the time he'd realized it, Kai was staring at him wide-eyed, a mixture of surprise and wonder on his face. Uh, Sen uh, uh, felt himself flush. He slapped a hand over his mouth and turned away in embarrassment. And then Kai started giggling assertively. Did you just... The giggles turned into chuckles. Sen, did you? The chuckles turned into barely contained laughter. And before long, Kai was laughing his head off. Hey, <laughs> Sen, you just... You just laughed! He managed to say between noisy gills of laughter. Sen felt his face go red. I know that, idiot. He snapped at Kai without looking back at him. Uh, without looking at him. Sorry about that. I don't have back for some reason. Kai wiped at the tears in his eyes. There, this has got to be a world record. I made Sen laugh. Man, if the others were here, Kai chuckled at the thought and he grinned at Sen's back. Hey Sen, did it feel good? To laugh, I mean. Because if it did, then you'll be sure to do more of it at the party. Sen shook his head. No, it did not. I just completely humiliated myself. Hey, Kai inched forward. It's okay to laugh. It shows that you're having fun. Sen laughed sarcastically. Does it? Okay, maybe that one didn't, but trust me, it's alright to laugh. It would be natural if you never. True. Uh, there was a long, silent pause. Kai stared at the, the kite while Sen still had his back to him. Alright, Sen, Kai said suddenly. I promise you that this is the last time I will ask you. Are you going to the party or not? This time, Sen didn't, answer, didn't reply immediately. In fact, it took him some time to reply. He sighed inwardly and fiddled with a chip on the ledge. His mind suddenly refused to work. It was a simple question with a simple answer, yet he couldn't reply. What was wrong with him? Come on, Sen, Kai urged. Be fun. Trust me. Sen turned to look at him, and then there was a spark in Kai's brown eyes. A spark that Sen couldn't really bear to let down. A spark that made his pulse quicken and his heart pick a pace. Trust you, he scarfed? <laughs> yeah, right. Give me one good reason to. Kai's eyes widened for a section before they eased into a smug smile. Fine then, and before Sen could say anything, Kai had closed his eyes and was leaning forward, getting dangerously closer, intruding on his personal space. Sen's eyes widened, his palms getting sweaty and his body heating up. His heart was pounding against his chest, which was the first okay, which was the first time he had ever done so in Kai's company. What do you Sen began to say, but Kai crushing his lips against his own cut him off. He hadn't even been expecting it, nor had he expected that he might even enjoy it, but he did. The feeling of Kai kissing him 
was like nothing Santa had ever felt before. It was soft and warm, tingling and inviting. However, it only lasted for a moment. Just as fast as he kissed him, Kai drew back and laughed, though his cheeks were sort of pinkish. You look like a tomato set, he said. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sen blinked and realized that his face must be really red. Oh, of course I do. You just, I mean, you just, like, how does that even trust you? Ah! Sen turned his back on Kai. Frustrated, he was flushing like mad and his heart was still pounding. Chai, Kai chuckled and saddled up to him. Was that enough for you? Sen didn't answer. He didn't want to answer. So have you made your decision yet? Are you coming or not? And just as suddenly as the kiss, Sen felt the answer in his gut and on his tongue. He didn't know or how or why, but it was just there, and he couldn't do nothing to deny it. Yeah, he said nonchalantly. Sure, why not? Kai's eyes widened, and he looked surprised, to say the least. Y you mean it? He said disbelievingly. You're, you're really coming? Sen glared at him. Do I freaking need to repeat myself? Kai laughed, though he still looked surprised but relieved. Of course not. He got up and extended a hand for Sen to take. The smile that he gave him was enough to put Sen's doubting mind at ease and convince him that he was making the right choice. He swatted Kai's hand away and stood up. I don't need your help, he grumbled. Kai chuckled and before Sen could protest, entwined his fingers with Sen's. You won't regret this, he said. Um, he said as they walked hand in hand towards the door. Sen raised an eye around him. Not if you make me regret it. Kai smiled. I won't. Trust me. Um, I... So, my thoughts on the story. I thought it was a very nice short one shot. Um, there's no grammar errors except for that mistake I did. <laughs> I apologize for that, that error. <coughs> so, I thought this was, uh, I thought this was a neat little story. Uh, I have nothing wrong with the pairing. I don't know anything about, what, uh, about night, or what's it called? Uh, yeah, night. Knight. Um... Uh, I thought it was really paced. It was short, but it was paced really well. Uh, I had nothing wrong with the characters. I had nothing wrong with the idea behind the story. It's just one guy inviting another to a party. They have a crush on... I believe they had a crush on each other. Uh, and then, you know, to convince them, they decided... He, uh, Kai decided to kiss Sen. Uh, I... Pacing-wise, character-wise, plot-wise, I had nothing wrong with it. Uh, I just, I still don't like this because it's just a big bugbear to me. I, I just, it, it, it just, it just, any sensible person who likes reading in general, they're not going to complain about this. The only people who are going to complain about this story are people who are not fans of Yaoi. And even people, and there are people who are not fans of Yaoi who will still like good story. Um, I read a couple of Yaoi stories and I had no problem with it if it was a good story. Um, so I can't really complain. I would actually, if I had to rate this on a 1 to 5, I would actually give this a 4. Uh, I think maybe we, I think it would have been better if the kid, if you, we saw, was, saw a little bit of the party before they kissed and, you know, we had a mistletoe thing. I think that would have been slightly better. Uh, I saw nothing Nothing wrong. I think it was above average. It didn't. It didn't really interest me for the first half. It only really interests me at the second half. Uh, I did like the idea of the kites with the lights. I don't know if that's actually happened in the comic, but I really liked it. Um, <coughs> uh, and no, I'm not. I'm not making it a five out of five because of this. I'm making a five out of five of it because I don't. I think the fur. I think at least the first half is kind of missing something. Uh, that's just me. Uh, everyone is entitled to their own opinions. These are my opinions. Uh, I think maybe if it's just, uh, if, uh, and maybe if I saw, like, a little bit more, uh, conversation, like, build-up conversation to the second, the second conversation, uh, the second conversation, the first conversation, I think it's just completely missing something. I don't know what it is. It's one of those things that you don't know what it is. But you have a but it's one it's a gut feeling that you that you're pretty sure is missing something. And I just honestly don't know what it is. I mean I I've seen it a couple of times. I've read stories where, you know, there's something I don't like about the story, but you can't but you I can't put my tongue on, on what it is. Um but 
I do like, I do think it's a fine story. So that's my reading and mini review on Trust Me by Koyukis. I still believe I butchered that. Uh, so tell me what you think in the comment section below. This has been Dark Symphony 777, and cut.